Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Miss Angler's biology class. I am Miss Angler. In today's video, we are going to be looking at a past exam question on incomplete dominance. Now, this particular question is not too challenging at all. It's pretty straightforward. However, I wanted to show you how easy it is to get full marks for these kinds of questions. This is out of nine, which is about 3% of your whole paper. And this 3% could be the difference between you getting a 40 or a 30 or even a 70 and an 80 percent average now if you are new here don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed with your notifications turned on because i post every tuesday and thursday now if you want to pause the video now please do so to attempt the question otherwise i'm going to go through it i'm going to show you how to get full marks in any exam now, if at any point you are uncertain about what exactly is incomplete dominance, I have actually linked a video up above now for you to go and watch that on the types of dominance and how to work with them. And also, I have a whole section on how to explain this and how to do these problems in my study guide, the cheat sheet, a little step-by-step -step explanation as well for you. But essentially, you should expect to see at least one of these in an exam paper, especially in your final. And this is a classic question about flowers. So the diagram below shows the inheritance of flower color in snapdragon plants. There are two alleles that control the color of a flower. They are red with a capital R and white with a capital W. Now I want to remind you that a cross that is incomplete dominance is definitely going to have two different lettered alleles. We've got a W here and we've got an R there. Remember in complete dominance it is the same letter just used as a lower or upper case. Now it's really important to track this, um, the use of the letters, and not to make a mistake where you, you want to use the, just the letter R or just the letter W. Now, another important piece of information they've given us is what happens when you cross the two um, flowers together. So they're telling you when you cross a red flower with a white flower, it is going to produce a pink flower. Now, the only way that's possible in incomplete dominance is if our red flower, the two alleles it has, is two capital R's and the white must be two capital W's. Now, that is because in incomplete dominance, neither of our um, alleles are dominant and it forms an intermediate um, color or an, an intermediate phenotype, which in this case is the pink color. And the only way that that's possible is if we inherit one R allele and one W allele to make RW in pink. Now, if we look at our questions, we're going to take this and apply it. So it says, state the type of dominance shown in the snapdragons. Now, I've told you it's incomplete dominance, but the key bit here is, can you actually tell me why it's incomplete dominance? And you'll actually see the next question is going to ask you that. It's going to say, give a reason for your answer in question 2.4.1. The next important step is you are going to have to substantiate your answer, which means you need to obviously give a reason. Now, this is tricky because it's out of two marks. So I like to guide my students with a similar idea when we do um, the explain questions. We are going to provide a statement. So yet again, there will be a statement and you must follow it with a reason to get two out of two. Now, the statement about the type of dominance. Well, the fact that there is what we call an intermediate color, which is pink in this case, means that there is combining of colors, right? So we're making a new color. So statement, there is an intermediate color, which in this case is pink. And the reasoning for that, why that happens is because in incomplete dominance, there is no dominant alleles. Therefore, it becomes a mix, okay, a mix of the two. Please do not use the wording, they're equally dominant, because that's a different kind of dominance. Remember, that is co-dominance. 
Now we're going to move on to our next question, which says a gardener crossed two pink flowered snapdragon plants. Use a genetic cross to show the ratio of the expected phenotypes of the offspring. Now remember, when you are doing your genetic cross, it's really important to get the format right so that you can get full marks. And also, you need to make sure that you have selected the correct parental alleles or the correct parental genotype. So let's just fill that in before we begin. Now, it says two pink flowered um, snapdragon plants, which means that they should both be RW. The tricky part is, if you didn't correctly identify the alleles in the very beginning, you're not going to be able to calculate any of this in the exam. You're going to start using the wrong letters. Maybe you are going to use a big R and a little R or a big W and a little W and you get very confused. So even though it's a very straightforward question for six marks, it has room for error because you will continuously carry the error the whole way through. Now, to save time, I am going to show you the memo answer of the cross because it'll go a lot quicker and I can explain some things just visually showing it to you. Now, here is the memo for question one and question two, but I want to focus in over here on the third question. So I'm going to highlight what's really important here, and that is going to be making sure you got the parental genotype correct. So as always, we're going to write P1, or in this case, they're giving you the option of putting P2, because technically you're taking the offspring of of F1 and you're now making them the parents of P2 but if you didn't do that that's okay they, as you can see they're still going to accept P1 and we're going to go pink times pink for one mark or RW times RW and don't forget we need to write meiosis and fertilization now may I just add that where they write this on the side here everybody is not really where it should go. If you know in class, you know that you've got to go RW times RW. You're supposed to write meiosis. You're supposed to put your gametes. I put my gametes in a circle like this. And then you write the word fertilization. And then you draw um, F1 or in this case F2, and then you draw your Punnett square. Now, I want you to know that the most important part of the structure is that meiosis must always come first and fertilization must always come second in order, and they must have a big enough space in between them. So even if you're not putting them exactly where I put mine over here on this side, like underneath each other, as long as meiosis is first, wherever you put it on the page, that's all that matters. And it must be before the gametes and fertilization must be after the gametes and it can be in line with the Punnett square like we see here. Now, this particular one has just put the gametes straight into the Punnett square themselves. So there we go, RW. We do the cross and we end up with the following outcome. We are going to get one um, set of red um, alleles. We are going to get two sets of pink, so RWs, and then we're going to get one white. Now, if we look at the compulsory mark, which remember the question said, give us the ratio. This is really important, this answer here. You will notice they're not giving any marks for writing 25% RR, um, and they're not giving, you know, or 25% RR, R, R, W is 50%. They're not giving any marks for that because they didn't ask for it. You can give it. You won't be penalized. But the key is they wanted the phenotypic ratio, which means you need to convert your percentages into a ratio. And that does work out because what they're saying is here, for every one red, there are going to be two pinks and one white. And it's important that you write it in the correct order. If you, however, wrote, um, you've got pink first, then you've got red, then you've got white, that's okay as well because as long as your numbers follow that correct order. In other words, when you write down your ratio, the two 
aligns with the pink, the one aligns with the red, and the one aligns with the white. That's also, that's fine. So the order in which you write the colors is not important. What is important is when you write them in that order, their ratio number must be in the same order. And that is why this is out uh, of six in total. One mark goes to a compulsory mark, which is this ratio here we've just discussed. And the other five are any other five marks in this cross. Now, if you're a little bit confused about how to structure crosses, I suggest you go watch my video on monohybrids because that's what you're doing here. And it's a very simple video explaining how to get six out of six every time you do one of these crosses. Now, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure you have your notifications on because I post every Tuesday and Thursday. And again, if you want to get your hands on the study guide, the cheat sheet, you can get it on missangler.co.za. And last but not least, I must always plug in my uh, membership on YouTube where you get extra lessons, live lessons with me, extra video content and access to my study guide for free. But that's it for today's video and I will see you all again soon. Bye!